Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching Business Morning on Channels Television. And we're still talking about the need to develop Nigeria's industrial sector. And um, Mr. George Onafuoko, the CEO, Coleman Wires and Cable, is still here with me. Thank you very much, George, for staying on. Right before we went on break, um, we were talking about government policies and you were talking about the fact that there is need for a holistic um, uh, policy if we must drive uh, growth in the industrial sector. Now, some analysts have said that, um, talking about manufacturing sector now, uh, it has stagnated for over 30 years now, and that has also been blamed policy, government policy, perhaps inconsistency. Aside from not getting that, aside from the holistic uh, unavailability of holistic policies, what are we doing wrong, really, in the area of policy? Because we seem to have good policies. Mm. I don't know where the mismatch comes. Uh, I think for us, I think for the manufacturers, the mismatch comes from I think inconsi the inconsistencies of those policies. But what what I think, if my if we have to pinpoint areas where the government itself is getting it wrong in industry, mm -hmm. is I think there are two key areas. Now, with any industrialization, what creates in industrialization is one investment. Now, for you to create investments, you need to make it financially viable. Now, for you to make it financially viable, you have to look at the cost of funds. Now, that is one key area that we seem not to be relooking as well as we have been before. Now, because there, there's no business that runs on its own without money. No, no investor will come in without seeing earnings. Now, neither will the banks come in without seeing that you can repay their interest. Now, a double-digit interest rate in mm -hmm. this country has been one of the hindrances of uh, growth in that sector because most double digit interest people even most of the commercial banks feel that it's not doable on a long term that you must try and get money as short as possible and get out out of the old program now you've seen some government policies some cbn intervention funds that have come in I think the recent one is the MSE uh, yeah, the, the, the 220 30 billion, billion for which yeah. has not gone far. It has not even worked. In my own, in my own view, it's it's still coming up. I mean, some mm -hmm. states are assisting it's, that. It's it's not coming up well because if you look at the figures, uh, it's nine percent APR, uh, three percent from CBN. The banks are not buying into it because they look yeah, at they the spread. Not it's mm. not good enough. Now. Mm. If the banks are not buying into it, who are supposed to be the one guaranteeing CBN for the money, then what's the point? Now, then two, as much as I like the idea of women empowerment, it says 60% of the funds should go to women. women. That's also an ad sell. It's not that we don't have Why women. Why do you say so? I, I'm not saying we don't have women empowered in the businesses, but you are looking to grow your industry. No, but when you talk about um, these small businesses, you know, coming up, women do no, better Some there. of it, they, they said medium also. So I, I read into it and it says employees up to 200 also. Uh, you're looking at half a billion turnover. Now, you have women and we do have women industrialists in this country. For how many? Now, you're interested in growing your industry in your country it's not gender dependent not yet we are not there when we are there when we have so much industry and maybe gdp figures we i'll say industry now contributes 30 40 percent we can be very selective now we're there, we're still contributing six six three percent to the gdp figure now to be selective you're not impacting anybody now you don't find out what I think is happening is the banks are struggling to find all the women they can put on that scale. It's not that you don't want to lend women, but at the beginning stage, you don't try and be selective. You try and push everybody as much as possible. People of course don't qualify for it, unfortunately. I still think they should do more 
for the large scale. We, we have unfortunately moved from the medium scale to the large scale from the figures I've seen, and I can't qualify for it. Now, so it leaves some of them out of the picture, it leaves some people out of it, so we are the segment that have lost out of this new scheme. Now, for the segment, they're trying to grow SME. I was at an SME forum recently. And you have, still have a lot of barriers to SME funding for the industry and for manufacturing. It's still difficult for the banks to see it. Now, CBN, yes, is coming up with good ideas, but you can't limit the ideas. If the SME fund says we have 30% people that are women doing this thing and 70% men, it has nothing to do with gender, unfortunately. But we need to grow it. So SME manufacturing has to grow. It's not a gender thing. Now, once I have achieved purpose, I can be very selective. It's like now everybody is saying, no, I think we're getting red, uh, good on our democracy. We should segment this uh, National Assembly to have some certain genders in it. It's because you have grown your democracy to a point where you feel you need representation. Oh. We haven't grown industry to that point where we need representation. Let's grow it first. When you've achieved growth, then you can do anything because it is easy to then grow a segment out of a very developed sector than when it is not. If we go to oil now and said, I want to develop some certain ladies or women gender out of oil, I will agree with you because the oil sector has grown. But industry is still 6.3% of this GDP. It is not there yet for that type of selective. 230 billion, you need to impact the economy, you need to impact it now. Not six months, eight months after you said it, it's still not doing anything. So then you don't have devaluation. These same people have still not got these funds to redress their businesses or to improve it. We're still in the same position. Oh. So that's why I say there's some government policies that do a sort of forward and backward thing. Mm. It, it's a good idea, but then it's an idea that takes us backwards. All right. So that, I think, we need to change the policies that there should be more. If they want to do the women, th I'm totally supporting it. But we need to do more for the industry, both SMEs, both large-scale industries, to try and single-digit those th uh, interest rates. All right. Still talking. Um, the, the policy issue, and uh, you did mention the issue of funding and, of course, interest rates. We saw what the CBN did. Aside from devaluing the Naira, we saw a further tightening of the monetary policy rate. I mean, they have their reasons for doing that, perhaps to create a kind of equilibrium in devaluing the Naira and, of course, tightening uh, monetary policy, especially in the light of um, the political uh, uh, we are in the political era and all, and all that. So, I mean, uh, what would you have expected the CBN to do, you know, at this point? Uh, uh, for me, I think the CBN made the right decision. Uh, CRR uh, from cash reserve for private uh, sector funding from 15 to 20 percent, I think, was very necessary. Uh, you, you cannot get money to come into the economy and not tighten it back. Otherwise, you have inflation and hyperinflation issues going on. Now, you, you have those two issues have happened. Uh, MRR has gone from 12 to 13 percent. The impact of that is immediately for someone, people like us and everybody in this industry, have seen letters from their bank increasing interest rates. Now, we have seen interest rates go up automatically between 200 basis points to 500 basis points, which is about 5 percent. Now, so you're talking average interest rates are going over 20%. And for, I'll say, large scale, for medium, small, and SMEs, you're then talking well in excess of 25 to 30%. Now, is this sustainable? Now, tightening is good. Devaluation has happened. Tightening would not follow anyway. But I think it's a short-term thing. It, with what I've seen in my own experiences with the tightening is that it happens then the banks most likely will price it in that, look, this is the future tightening that we expect. And you don't see movement on those interest rate volatility again. But for now, the industry is taking the direct impact of everything, both interest rates now at the same time. Oh. This. 
All right, Jibrav, just a, a quick one. Uh, we got a tweet from Salter Swan. He is concerned about the automobile um, policy. He says um, if FG is focusing on automobile and it is clear it's too huge for investors, can FG support small-scale manufacturing? Yeah. Well, I mean, but they yeah. have to. Because mm. you don't go into automobile industry and tell us that we should only be, uh, I'll call it, packaging of cars. Because in reality, there's some aspect of cars that needs to be localized. So this will be developed by SMEs. Yeah, the car harnesses. Car harnesses basically are cables that you use with it. Now, this used to be produced locally. We're still going to produce it locally. Some of us can't produce these car harnesses locally. Mm -hmm. Now, why would I have to import the cables in the car when the local guys can produce it? Why would I have to import the chairs in the car when I can get someone to locally fabricate? Now, the whole point of this automation is to create other smaller businesses that will support. Most car manufacturers, you need to check them. They don't manufacture, they may be manufactured at maybe 10% of the content of the car. But you have a situation where they actually find it depending on a lot of other industries to manufacture the thing. So I think eventually it would work, but it would take a lot more time. But then the funding thing on CBN has to come into it. <laughs> Right. Thank you very much, uh, uh, George. It's been an interesting conversation, and it's actually an ongoing conversation because we'll keep um, talking about this, and eventually that's the way forward in the face of this dwindling oil price. We really don't have a choice. We just have to do it, and I hope the government will have to note that. I'm in agreement with you. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, we've been talking about Nigeria, the need to develop Nigeria's industrial sector. And um, I've been speaking with um, George Onofuwoko. He is the CEO of Coleman Wires and Cable. And for him, government needs to make its policies quite holistic. Well, it's on that note that we say thank you very much for being part of the program today and, of course, for the rest of the week. Um, I always say, thank God it's Friday. Hope to see you again same time next week. That's on Monday. Have a lovely day.